I'm about to uh, travel to Iceland for three weeks and uh, I thought I'd show you how, how to pack if you're going away for an extended time uh, to Iceland. Um, now Iceland is a quite a special place. It's not uh, your average hiking destination where you can walk around in shorts and ultralight gear. You have to prepare for the weather. Uh, it can be quite extreme with very, very intense winds and uh, quite a lot of rain. And it can get quite cold as well. So uh, in order to do that, you need to figure out how to pack, but not overpack. So you need to go light, uh, not too many clothes, even though it's tempting to have um, lots of changing clothes uh, when you uh, get wet and things like that. But for my pack, I have um, my CPEX uh, zip, arc zip. Um, I like it because um, you can open it up like so and access uh, everything in there. Still a very ultra light, uh, light pack and it fits me very well. Also have a little mesh here where I can put some uh, damp or moist uh, gloves and socks to let them dry out a bit. For shelter, I'm using the CPAX uh, Plex Solo. Now granted, this one is a little bit small and I wish maybe I went with a duplex. Um, this one is a little bit lighter, but only about 100 grams. It's still a very good tent, but it does get a bit cramped in there. So um, yeah, a little bit better would have been more comfortable for those rained in days. Um, something to say about these trekking pole tents in Iceland is that uh, uh, the soil is either uh, very, very loose or it's very, very hard. And uh, that can cause some, uh, some big problems, especially when the wind comes. And uh, to get a good grip with the stakes, uh, you're going to need uh, some proper stakes. So at least you're going to need this size. This is the biggest one that uh, CPEX makes. It's about the size of the MSR Groundhogs. So these ones will uh, give you a chance. They're still not really good enough. You're going to have to put stones on top of them. Uh, in the places where the sand is very loose. Usually there will be stones lying around, so it shouldn't be a huge problem. But this time around I'm also packing uh, two uh, very big stakes uh, just to get that extra grip. Because uh, I'm telling you, when um, the wind comes in the middle of the night and feels like a tent is about to lift off, um, it's good to have all the holding power you can get. And I have seen uh, tents flying off in the middle of the night and it's even happened to me. So whatever you do, don't just go with these tiny sticks. These are good for uh, tying out, um, you know, th those um, uh, uh, guy lines uh, that expands uh, uh, the space inside the tent. Uh, for that, you can use this. But anything else, you need a little bit more heavy duty stakes. Um, my sleeping mat. I just upgraded to the Rapide SL, which is supposedly to be uh, one of the more comfy sleeping pads out there. I have been using um, the Thermarest uh, Neo Air X Lite for quite some time and uh, well, I was kind of happy with it but um, it sleeps warm but I think it's also a little bit too uh, too narrow. There is a regular version and I probably uh, not regular there is a wide version and I probably should have gone with that uh, because this uh, it feels like sleeping on a plank with this and I need more comfort uh, for Iceland I think so that's why I'm going with this one which is uh, uh, it's super comfortable um, very very good but heavy twice the weight as the uh, new air thermo rest um, for my sleeping uh, uh, bag I have the CPEX uh, 20 degree Fahrenheit uh, quilt. Well this is actually right on the edge for what you need. Um, I would recommend if you have the option to get a 10 degree filt uh, that would uh, see you through most of the nights without a problem. This one I probably would have to get a pajamas on or maybe even get uh, uh, some extra layers of clothes on when I'm sleeping if it really really gets cold. Uh, I hope that the combination with the new pad is going to eliminate all kinds of drafts and things. Um, I would also recommend maybe get uh, some more sleeping bag style uh, uh, instead of a quilt just to eliminate all the chances of draft and things like that. You 
might find that very useful. Okay, moving on to the clothes. Onto the clothes. I recommend you put everything into getting uh, the best rain clothes you possibly can. You will never see an Icelander walking around in some flimsy uh, helium uh, jacket or uh, anything like that. You need some proper stuff. And Iceland is uh, the only place where I've seen where you can actually buy these um, complete rubber plastic uh, um, <clears throat> raincoats. They're very heavy, but they're the, it's actually the only thing that it really keeps the water out. But I'm going to go with Gore-Tex. So I got my Gore-Tex jacket. It's recently um, got a new layer of the DWR on it. So keep your Gore-Tex jacket in uh, as good condition as you can. Either you should, if you used it for a while, try uh, uh, washing it and then dry tumbling it at like 60 degrees for half an hour. That should reactivate the DWR. But if you have it for a longer time, you can buy a spray bottle with DWR and just apply it and then also uh, dry tumble it afterwards to uh, get it to, uh, to, to activate. But if you have a, a Gore-Tex jacket, this would be the time to use it. I'm also bringing a Frog Talks poncho with me. So the poncho, I'm there. well, I'm going to use it uh, when I'm hiking to put it uh, on top of everything. But mostly it's going to be used to cover up my backpack when I'm setting up the tent and these kind of things. So I think this will come in very handy. I also have... Um, CPAC's Vertis rain pants, very thin, very light, does a good job for quite some time. It will buy you maybe two, three hours uh, before this all through. I also have seal skins. These will mostly be used for river crossings. So my plan is that uh, I'm going to put these on when there's a river crossing and I'll put my trail runners back on and then I'll just wade through and hope that uh, the trail runners will eventually dry out. So these are waterproof-ish. They will also get wet after a while, especially if you walk with wet shoes, uh, water will come into them, but they actually keep your feet warm for quite some time. And once uh, you feel ready, you just take them off and put on your dry uh, wool socks after that. Now the hands are a real problem. I struggled intensely last time I was there. So... I have a system to keep my hands dry. Last year I had to, I used one of these only and then I put a plastic bag and that actually works but it gets a little bit cumbersome uh, to, <laughs> to use. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to bring some Vileda dishwasher gloves. I'm just going to put them on top like this to get it like 100% waterproof. And then I also have um, a pair of uh, uh, wool mittens that I'm going to put over like this. That would make for a very warm, nice hike. Yeah, because last time, uh, well, we had a storm coming through and uh, it just feels like your hands are falling off and uh, it's not nice. You have to keep your hands in your pockets and then you start stumbling around so it's not nice and it's not safe. So, yeah, so, something, something like this. I think bare minimum you should get a pair of wool gloves uh, or mittens like this. Um, because even when they get wet, they will give you some protection uh, for the, from the cold. I actually have a pair of seal skins, uh, seal skins uh, uh, gloves, but I found them to be very hard to get on and off, and they um, actually get wetted through after a while as well, because you, you go walking with your trekking poles like this, and that pushes in the water, so they get soaked anyways, and then they never dry out. So. So I hope I have ho high hopes that this is gonna gonna do the trick. Top of my head, I have a wool cap, camouflage as a volcano, which is perfect. Uh, on my feet, I have darn tough socks. Love these socks, really good for me. Uh, what I'm gonna be hiking in mostly is, uh, well, I got one base layer here of a, a, a merino T-shirt. This is going to double up as my uh, hiking t-shirt when it's a little bit warmer and uh, also as a towel for wiping off condensation or if I find a hot spring and I need to dry off afterwards. This will come in handy. 
but most of the time I will be walking in my Craghopper's Adventure shirt. So I will be wearing this and nothing underneath and nothing on top most of the time. Uh, when it gets colder, I have my Patagonia Puffy. So we put this on top. Uh, last year I had a down jacket. This is a synthetic jacket. Uh, uh, the down jacket actually got wetted through at one point and then never really recovered after that. So I hope that this synthetic one is going to perform a bit better. So I will put this on if it gets cold and then this one if it gets even colder or wetter, the, the Gore-Tex. And that's all I have. I don't have any fleece or any in-between layers after that. I'm going to trust that this is going to give me all the warmth that I need. And also further down got some Under Armour Boxer Jock Mesh. So these are nice breathable uh, 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 boxer shorts. Uh, they're elastic and they, they work as tights so they prevent chafing as well. Because you might get chafed there because of the dampness. It's, um, you might uh, experience quite a lot of chafing actually. So I got two pairs of those. One spare. Uh, pants or trousers. I got the Icebreaker Persistence Trousers. Now you can use any of your favorite trousers. You just need to be long. It doesn't necessarily get that cold, uh, but uh, it gets wet. So it's good to have something that's fast drying. And this one is very fast drying actually. But uh, yeah, use any anything you would like there, but uh, probably not shorts. I don't think it's a suitable place for shorts, to be honest. And da -da -da. Sleeping system. I have a uh, Trichology pillow, quite a large version. And with the sleeping system, I think it's, um, it's really important to have one set of clothes that you keep extremely dry for when you come back to camp. So you, uh, for safety reasons and for your comfort reasons, it's nice to just slide into something that's nice and warm. Uh, I get this buff, merino buff, for uh, covering the ears and the, and the head when I'm sleeping, give that a little bit of warmth. I have a Rob, uh, Rob Merino shirt, long sleeved, gives me a little bit of extra warm, warmth. And I also have a, a pair of long johns from Montaigne in this case. case you can use anything, of course. Um, one thing with this is also, I always put this on to keep the grime off uh, the sleeping bag and uh, the sleeping mattress, just keep it a little bit nicer and neater and gives me just a little bit extra warmth. On my feet I will be having these, it's uh, the Ultra uh, Ultra Olympus. Uh, they're really good, you got some uh, uh, max cushion, very spongy and nice, but they're also extremely sturdy and they grip the, the heel pretty good. Let's say, and the lugs here have been uh, proved to be amazing. So a very tight, nice feel. So I have high hopes that these are going to be performing really, really well. Okay, um, now on to uh, some more, more things. For extra water protection, I'm going to wear this uh, uh, trash compactor bag. It's just a plastic bag. Keep all my stuff in there and uh, usually works really well. Trekking poles. I have some Lakey uh, Vario Carbon Trekkie Poles, very good to have in Iceland. Uh, I got a little seat pad, just to keep my behind dry. Um, On to the cooking system. Well, so I got a Katadium B3 filter that's hooked up to a Hydra Pack. Now this Hydra pack is one of the few um, packs you can buy separately that would actually allow you to screw on this uh, Catadian filter. So it's a two liter, uh, two liter pack here. I uh, got a little titanium uh, pot. This is a no name brand or it's a Tom shoe from Amazon, super cheap. With a lid. 
got a C to Summit mug. I'm a huge coffee coffee drinker, so um, I need my own collapsible mug with me. Plastic spoon, C to Summit. Tiny salt shaker. A uh, little cloth for uh, cleaning the dishes. And uh, I also have a tiny knife, tiny Opinel knife for mostly slicing sausages or things like that. Uh, my stove is a Soto Windmaster. I highly recommend to get a proper stove and leave the BRS stove or the other ultralight stoves at home because uh, the wind will, will give you problems. This one works pretty, pretty good. This could even be the situation where you actually take your jet boil with you. It um, might come in handy actually. Uh, it does come with um, igniting system here, but I also pack a extra lighter just in case. Toiletries and uh, hygiene stuff. Packing um, some uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, toothpicks with dental floss. Uh, for cleaning um, and uh, washing clothes, I got a Dr. Bronner soap. I'm packing a Dio to keep fresh. Some painkillers, that's my medicine. And some uh, painkiller cream. I don't pack any Luca tape or any compete like that. I find that uh, last couple of years I don't get any blister anymore. I got the good socks and I got trail runners and it all works out pretty good now with the kit I have. So I don't really have to worry about that. When it comes to electronics, this would be the basic electronics. If you're not carrying any photo equipment or anything like that, all you need is a nice headlamp. Here I got the Nightcore 25 UL. It's a very light uh, lamp with a USB-C connector. Uh, I like to try to keep everything into USB-C now just to minimize the confusion with lots of cables. Cables are not heavy, but they're kind of a pain to find when you're in the tent. There always seems to be the wrong one missing. Uh, you're going to need a power bank. I'm going with the Nightcore NB10000. Um, it's, a, it's a really good lightweight uh, power bank. I really, really like it. Um, I recommend because the problem in, um, in Iceland is that uh, you cannot charge on the trail in most places. You will come to a cabin and they will flat out refuse to let you charge your phone. So that's something to keep in mind. So keep bring the energy you want for your trip with you can't even pay them to do it. You can see they have electricity, so it's not an issue, but hey. Um, for cables, I'm gonna need, um, uh, this is a USB-C to lighting, because I'm uh, an iPhone user. So I'm gonna need the lighting. Uh, I also have a uh, USB-C to a, uh, well, this is the magnetic uh, wireless charger. So this is a, well, it might be a little bit too heavy um, or unnecessary to bring, but the, the thing is that what you can do is, if you can see that I've plugged in the charging port just to keep all the water out, because these, when they get soaked through, you will get this annoying message that you get water in, uh, in your charger and then you can't charge it. And that's very, very annoying, especially when you're getting low on power and it's like, ah, oh, how do you get out of that? So my solution is to, uh, plug it up and use this uh, wireless charger instead. So that's usually works pretty fine. Uh, got another USB-C to USB-C for charging the uh, uh, headlamp. Then I got a very good uh, uh, wall socket. Uh, it will uh, give quite a lot of energy out so you can charge some uh, heavy duty devices as well where it got three ports so I can charge everything I want at once. I'm also bringing my uh, Apple iPod headphones. Uh, these are very good. Can't live without them. So I think that's all you need for, um, for tech stuff, actually, unless you're a photographer or a drone operator. And that's actually what takes up the majority of my kit. That's what pushes it from being a very nice, very light kit to uh, 
becoming quite cumbersome and uncomfortable. So I'll show you that next. Okay, my uh, photographic equipment. So let's start with uh, the extra power I'm gonna need. So here I have um, an NB20000 from Nightcore. So that's double the power from uh, the NB10000. So I'll be carrying both. So I have 30,000 extra milliamps. Um, for that, then I'm gonna be needing a couple of extra cables. Uh, yeah. Uh, carrying the Mini 3 Pro drone from DJI with the RC controller. Uh, it's got a built-in screen here, so it's pretty nice. And extra battery and some extra propellers and a screwdriver. Uh, lots of um, SD cards, micro SD and, uh, and uh, normal SD, as fast as, the fastest you can find pretty much for these, uh, these things. It's, it's always the best. My camera is uh, the Fuji GFX 50R with a 35 to 70 millimeter uh, lens. It's a really good lens. It's maybe a little bit slow, 4.5 to 5.6, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really good compact lens for this system. This is also gonna be my filming camera. So it only films in 1080p, but the results actually looks pretty, pretty nice. Uh, that sensor is uh, it's really epic and it's like almost like filming in IMAX, but uh, yeah. For that reason, I am actually packing some uh, vintage lenses. So I got a uh, Pentax lens. This is the 50 millimeter 1.7. Uh, for that, I'm gonna need an adapter. So the colors and uh, the look you get from this one is uh, absolutely amazing. And I really, really love it. So I will be shooting and filming a lot with this lens. I also got a zoom lens, also a Pentax. So this one goes up to 200 millimeters, so I can catch those puffins on the cliffs and uh, some uh, arctic foxes. Uh, got a battery for the Fuji GFX and, uh, and a charger. I also have um, some filters. This is a magnetic polarizer and a three-stop ND filter that goes uh, on the GFX like this snap on and yes uh, I gotta have the sensor cleaners and other cleaning things includes some of these size uh, wet wipes and a uh, microfiber towel for the camera Audio is uh, the Rode Video Micro. Well, I'm filming with that one just now or taking up the audio with that one just now, but I'll have the Dead Cat here to show you what, I, what it is. And for that, I also need a bunch of adapters, depending on which camera you actually have to plug it into. So this one would go to the iPhone if I have the lighting connector, which I have here. And uh, yeah, a couple of these uh, little extra connectors is what you need depending on which camera you want to plug the microphone into. And uh, to carry the GFX, I have a Shimoda bag. It's a holster. I can either hang it around my neck with this strap, or I have, um, so I can get the hip belt through air, and carry it like a proper holster. And the camera just goes in here. And you can easily access it and get it out. And this will also serve as waterproofing for, for the camera. Uh, additional things uh, that is good to have. So I recently just picked up the Garmin Messenger. So this is an SOS and a satellite uh, uh, messenger app. So it will allow me when I'm out in the wilderness to send text messages to, uh, to home and in case of emergency also push the uh, SOS button. So this one pretty much replaces the uh, Garmin inReach. Um, I think this, everybody seems to uh, agree that this is the better version. It's a bit cheaper, it's 100, uh, 100 euros cheaper as well than uh, uh, the inReach. So we'll see if that holds up. You pair it with your phone and then you use the phone to message. So, gotta keep the phone in charge, I guess. 
Also, for video editing, I have uh, the iPad Pro um, with uh, the pencil. Got to have a uh, way to get the video off from it. This is a Sabrent uh, SD card reader. I get that in and then I have Final Cut on the, on the iPad and I can edit the footage there. And then I also have a uh, half terabyte uh, extra disk to put the material on that when I'm done with it. So and that's it. That's all I'm going to carry. It's quite a lot when it comes to the technical part, but uh, yeah. Hope that helps and uh, enjoy your hike in Iceland.